Right now it is time for Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Wortman. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Also, Simon Loses His Tummy and her latest book, Before Her Voice Was Still. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Dr. Judy Wortman. Good morning. Good morning, and I'm wondering, as you're talking and describing what's happening in a very orderly and well-controlled fashion in various places with the count is going on, I wonder what they're eating. Because, obviously, as I heard today on the news, many of them have daytime jobs, those people who have been working through the night, and so they're, they have to stay awake, and you don't want them to eat anything that might cause them to feel drowsy. Um, you don't want them to drink a lot of coffee, which might make them feel jittery, uh, and you certainly don't want them uh, to be hungry. And, you know, as Jill and I have talked about for so long, you know, maybe they should be eating complex carbohydrates, like uh, do they have sweet potatoes as snacks or oatmeal or just, you know, perhaps uh, high-fiber breakfast cereals or something. But are they must be eating something if you don't stay awake for nine hours after, uh, you know, a whole day of working without eating something. But let's hope that whatever they're eating, it keeps their focus sharp let's hope for and doesn't a handful cause them of to uh, feel drowsy or, you know, just or anxious. Hand, what, what is it? handful of Cheerios. Um, oh, what, what was those hideous bran muffins? But bran, bran muffins are better now, right? Oh, absolutely. And again, I, I would think that... It used to be made uh, of sand. Were, you know, what they're eating, in a sense, in a very exaggerated sense, represents I think, what many, many people are feeling right now. It, it's curious. When, when I sent you the blog that I was writing about, it was started writing it last week when we, in, in the Boston area, were going through this period of two days of heavy rain and then a day of gloom and snow, <laughs> which we, no one could believe. And, and then finally the, the sun came out, and everybody was so down. Oh, how could this be happening? It's still October. I feel so depressed. It's dark. It's 4.30 in the afternoon, absolutely dark. And, um, you know, how can we endure the rest of this fall? We're not even in winter yet. And uh, and the the whole uh, syndrome of, of winter depression, you know, or winter blues or seasonal affective disorder, suddenly felt as if it was sitting on everybody's head. You know, people were feeling the need to sleep longer, uh, the, the need to um, eat a lot of carbohydrates because that, there's a craving for it, feeling irritable and angry and not wanting to socialize, not any, any opportunity to do that anyway. Um, you're feeling very tired. These are all the symptoms of that. And then, then of course, that added to the whole thing about, oh, my gosh, we are never going to get out of this pandemic. You know, the, the states are cracking down even more on any kind of social interaction. Restaurants are being told to close early. You know, it's getting worse in terms of the isolation for this pandemic, in addition to the, the darkness and the cold and the wind and the rain. And then on top of all this, I mean, do we need it? Uh, you know, the anxiety about what's going to happen. You know, will, how long will this recount take? Recount take, first count, and then there will be definitely a recount, I'm sure, in some states. Um, and and you think, well, what should we do about this? And, you know, you can't get on a spaceship and go off to moon, to the moon or, or go to any other country. We have to endure it. And uh, there, there's certainly, you know, ways of enduring it, like, you know, relaxation techniques and meditation and humor and uh, distracting yourself with funny movies or music or taking long walks with the weather permitting. And again, you know, the, the one basic thing that we always come down to is why not let your brain help you? And since your brain is causing you to have those little bolts of anxiety and depression and weariness and fatigue and irritability and anger, why not try to take hold of what is going on in your brain and turn it around? And one way of doing that, you know, that we know for people who are really in this seriously is for people to take antidepressants, anti-anxiety drugs, uh, tranquilizers, etc. But that is, should only be done if one actually has clinical manifestations, not just sort of national manifestations of this anxiety. But the other simple way is simply say, okay, we know that <clears throat> if you don't have enough serotonin, and that is what happens during the winter darkness, you get more by getting more of amino acid into your brain called tryptophan. Tryptophan gets into your brain when you eat carbohydrates. So why not eat carbohydrates, but... Don't eat them in the form of foods that are also going to cause you not to make only more serotonin, but make more fat in your to stick into your fat cells so that you are not only going to be bearing the anxiety of what's going on, but the anxiety of what am I going to do with all this extra weight. 
and there are all sorts of things that you can foods that you can eat. And one of the things, Jill, I keep talking about over and over again are breakfast cereals that people simply over, overlook because they don't eat breakfast. Yeah. But there's so many breakfast cereals that are very low in fat that are crunchy and sweet and um, have a good mouthfeel and can be eaten out of your hand. Uh, and you can eat your 25 or 30 grams of carbohydrate for maybe 130 calories, maybe 140 calories if you want to indulge yourself in a particularly wonderful breakfast cereal like maybe crackling oat bran or something like that. And you will, within 20 minutes, feel better. And it's so simple. You're not eating gooey no, it's like magic. chocolate chip cookies. You're not eating high-fat snacks like barbecued potato chips. Um, you're not eating French fries. You're not eating pizza. You're eating plain breakfast cereal. And, and you measure it out. You put it in a bag. You munch on it you know, one by one. Each little piece of, of Cheerio you put in your mouth is sort of very soothing, like what happens when you give it to a toddler. And you might actually feel better. Is it going to change the outcome of the election? No, but you might be able to endure it. Is it going to change the weather? No, but it might make it more endurable until things get better. It's amazing. It's, it's <laughs> just, it's, it's absolutely amazing how simple it is. I have a quick question. I don't know how much, I, I've got two, two minutes. Here's my quick question because oh, okay. there, there are a lot of... Um, uh, mothers with young youngish children around here now, um, and I just I recently saw somebody with their uh, five year old head up a hill in the pitch dark. You know the the, the kid had a mask on, but no 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 uh, clothing that uh, had uh, reflectors. And I'm just wondering, wow. yeah, exactly. So I'm just wondering, um, kid gets home from school, you're homeschooling, and what's 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 a good afternoon, you know, just a snack before dinner, kind of thing. Well, you know, I get. There are two things here. Uh, Jill, it depends what time must the child have dinner. People, people may be eating earlier, so you could say on the one hand, rather than giving your kid a snack at 4 o'clock, which you could do, like breakfast cereal or um, breadsticks or, you know, the little, the very skinny ones that, that, that are, are, are really fun to chew because they're, they're quite crisp, or pretzels. Uh, these are fat-free snacks, and they come in all sorts of sizes. Um, or, or else, you know, maybe even this is. I once learned this when I was in Sweden, but like another century ago, of course. You know, tiny, tiny little baby potatoes. You can find them in the supermarket, and you you steam them or you you quickly boil them until they're soft. And they're tiny. They're like the size of marbles, but not. You know, five year old's not going to choke on them. And and give give these little tiny potatoes to a kid to uh, you know to, to to eat. You know, they taste good and they're healthy. Um, and uh, you. They're not, uh, you know, they're not going to cause you to eat, you know, the kinds of processed ingredients that you might if you were eating something that is highly processed. So that that's another kind of snack. Or else, noodles. You know, you can boil up things like elbow macaroni, right. and and then you know give the kid a, a, a small bowl of, of noodles. So he picks out one, or she picks out one noodle at a time. Right. It, it, you know, you and I might not eat it, but kids like that, and it, it's a nice carbohydrate snack. Perfect. All right. To be continued. Thank you very much, okay. Dr. Judy. Oh, talk to you next week. We'll see what happens. Bye-bye. Food for mood. Of course, you can hear Judy right here on Robin Hood Radio every Thursday morning before this week in the Lakeville Journal.